Yeah. So, so we, I said, I said, I said I'm not involved in that. Six hundred thirty-four thousand. He said, yeah, yeah, I know. And then he said, can you meet with me? Can you meet with me? Yeah, versus with that guy. And seven, that the guy. So it was a very. Oh, that's guy. that guy. Oh, okay, I got it. Friars. What? Let's do it. That was funny. In Providence College. <laughs> he sent that, you should have been on it. He sent that out today. Good evening. Welcome to the July 15th regular town council meeting. Councillor Breton, would you lead us in the pledge? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Would the town clerk please take attendance? Councillor Breton. Here. Here. Councilor Hurley. Here. Councilor Latina. Here. Councilor Lesser. Here. Councilor Spinella. Here. Deputy Mayor Martino. Here. And Mayor Morandella. Here. Thank you. Thank you. Um, our first item of business is public comment. We have no hearings this evening, so we'll move right into general comment. Members of the public may speak for five minutes. If you would please state your name and address and speak into the microphone. Is there anybody who'd like to speak tonight? Mr. Cole Antonio, come on up. He beat you to it, Mr. Rue. <laughs> <laughs> a nice summer haircut there. Thank you, thank you. <laughs> and I also shaved. Yeah, you were looking uh, like Tom before. <laughs> yeah, but uh, when I realized that I could not really look like him, I gave up. <laughs> Good evening. Gascol Antonio, 16 Morrison Avenue. Uh, I'm going to repeat myself again. Uh, last year, sometimes on, uh, on Bird Road, I made a comment that uh, every time I go there, there is a car parked on one side, car parked on the other, right against, you know, opposite each other. And, and God forbid there is, a, there is a fire where a, a truck has to go by. It cannot. It doesn't fit. So I said and I asked the question, just like on Morrison Avenue, why do why are they allowed to park on both sides of the street the street is only 24 feet wide i think it should be parking only on one side and not the other uh i also a couple of years ago or a year ago uh orchard i complained about some bushes on uh, well on the west northwest i guess corner of orchard and also on the south east or no northeast corner there are edges and the edges are taking half of the sidewalk and it's okay right now i guess you know it's still you can walk on the grass but when there is snow and whatnot it's it's not right it's been like that for a long time those bushes take two feet of the existing four foot sidewalk i complain then i'm complaining again and I talked to a new neighbor that's there, and he has four kids. And he was concerned because once they get to the corner of Orchard and Hillcrest, <coughs> they have to go on the street. These kids are young. They got to go to school and they walk to school. Is anything ever going to get done? I sure hope so. Thank you for your time. Thank you, Mr. Colantonio. Anybody else who'd like to speak? Mr. Rue, come on up. Well, we're happy to have you. I got a request. I, oh, first of all, let me, let me tell you who I am, first of all. George A. Rowe, 956 Cloverdale Circle. Okay. I have a request. When my five minutes are up, which it shouldn't be a big problem tonight, quietly give me a signal and I'll try to stop, all right? But don't interrupt me. What brings me tonight is, is something of great concern. <clears throat> Some time back, I think I mentioned that Tip O'Neill, who was formerly head of the, of the Democratic uh, House of Representatives, coined a phrase that said, all politics is local. And that stuck with me, and it believe, I still believe it sticks with me. And why? Each week when I go to church, I happen to go through 
that corner where this guy's sitting where Al Darman sits with his sign. I forget the name of the streets. My mind is a little forgetful every once in a while. I forget the name of the streets. But anyway, I always honk my horn and give him a thumbs up. Because I happen to be very, very sensitive. I'm, I'm really tuned in to the, the message he's trying to send to our country at the local level. The other day, I went on the way to church. He was there. I stopped by and said hello. I told him who I was. And he says, oh, I know your daughter. I said, really? Okay. And that was as far as we went. I said, I happen to agree with you. And again, as the problems in our country from Washington by our esteemed leader <clears throat> spread throughout this country, it's starting to manifest itself, in my judgment, at the local level. I happened to notice in the article in the Rare Reminder that on this coming Saturday, I think it's on the 20, the 20th, yeah, there were a bunch of women in town are going to be marching and protesting for in light of what he's sharing and, and, and in the light of anybody with a, a modicum of common sense has to come to the conclusion that there's a lot wrong with our country, okay? Notwithstanding that the president says, if you don't like your country, why don't you leave? And I think I've said to you people, I love my country, but you don't have to love your government, okay? So that's a thought I just want to share with you at the local level. Again, at the, at the local level, a sharing a thought that really unsettled me. I'm not on Facebook. I, never, I seldom go near it. Once in a while, I get a message, and it pops out, and I say, gee, that's interesting. Well, I got this message not too long ago. It was a matter of fact, it was on the 5th of May. And I've had it on my desk. I wasn't too sure what to do with it. And I had said, I want to share this with the council. Because I think it's important to know what's happening, what this citizen thinks, and I think many citizens think, about what the hell's happening to our country. And on today's events, what's happening in Washington, you just gotta, it's just mind boggling. Well, anyway, the long and short of it was, this email or this Facebook thing said, and I'm quoting, Democrats, stop trying to overturn the previous presidential, presidential election. The electorate has spoken. Your obstruction against government pro progress must stop. Stop destroying the country. You say you want a revolution. And here's the following that really caught my attention. Except the fact that the execution branch, execution branch, I believe he's talking about execution, you know, ending one's life, chopping one's head off, or shooting them, or doing something like that. This execution branch of, is not in your party's control, or you, Democrats, are liable to incite one. I nearly went through the roof when I read this. And I thought to myself, I want to share this. I don't know whether, whether anybody else got this email. Maybe you did, maybe you didn't. Maybe you're all on Facebook. I'm not. I don't even know how to respond to it. Not too long after that, I, and, I, and I printed it out on, oh, it was on May 23rd. I got another email, another Facebook presentation. And I had that on my desk for a long time, too. I was, I was really very unsure of how I wanted to share this. But it speaks to me of something very rotten in, in, the, in, in the executive branch of our government, which I see filtering down to the local level, or I hope it, it can be filtering down. I hope it's not, but it seems to be. And this was, there were two pictures. One was a picture of a sign from Germany during the war. It was authorized by the Oberkommando der Wehrmacht. And you know I'm bilingual, and that means the chief of staffs, or the, the equivalent of our chief of staff, whatever this group is called, in Washington of the Army. And it was authorized by them. And it says, and I'm quoting, and I hope no one is offended, because it, it really unsettled me. Der Jude als Weltparasit. In other words, translated, I, oh, I will the Jew as a world parasite, <clears throat> okay? This, this was local, this is local. And next to that sign were a picture of three girls sitting on the grass with an English sign that says, parasites don't have rights. Parasites don't have rights. 
Now, this old brain of mine forgets a lot of stuff, but a lot of stuff it doesn't forget. And I thought to myself, how, what, what kind of a connection is trying to be made? My guess would be that many people who would read this probably wouldn't even know what it meant. But it really unsettled me. And I wanted to share it with you. And the quote under the picture of the girls was, don't stand so, don't stand so, don't stand so close to me. In other words, these parasites should not stand too close to these girls. Now, uh, someone locally putting this on Facebook, it's got to be deranged in some way or got big problems. Who that is, that's academic at this point. I happen to know who it is. So I wanted to share that with you. I got a problem. And Mr. Wu, you'll have time at the end to complete your comments. Your five minutes are up. <laughs> I wish you wouldn't stop. <laughs> I wish you wouldn't go there. Amy. I know. I'm, I know. I'm, I'm almost done. I'm I know. We, done. We've. I, I know we're almost done. I've just given you an extra 30 seconds. And, and if, you had a, if you had a hall full of people, I'd say fine. But, but I, this, uns, this, this, this attitude unsettles me also a little bit. But the other thing that this gentleman over there on Goff Road or whatever it is over there, uh, anyway, he talks about the concentration camps, and we have our concentration camps. And as we see, and as I see, <clears throat> these children down in Texas in these concentration camps, and you know I've seen one, been there, smelled it, and saw it during the war. And it unsettles me no end. And the other thing that I would want to share with you at the local level is our ICE people who raided the country and threw the whole place into a state of turmoil the other day, they don't seem to have too much trouble staffing these concentration camps. Just as the SS in Nazi Germany didn't have too much trouble finding people <clears throat> to staff those camps. And their search circumstances in those camps continuously degenerated and degenerated and got worse and worse and worse. And what worries me, and I wanted to share with you this with you, my local elected officials at the town level, local politics, is something to be aware of, something to be sensitive to as you look at how our police react. And I have no comment on this. I don't know whether it's good, bad, or otherwise. But I want to develop, I hope, to be able to encourage a higher level of awareness on my local officials as to what this country's really facing. It scares the friggin' daylights out of me. It scares the daylights out of me. I, I wonder where my little great-grandson's gonna fit into the scheme of things somewhere along the line. And this latest temper tantrum that the expletives deleted that took place in Washington these past couple of days is almost beyond comprehension. So I'm done sharing that, and I do appreciate the extra time, the extra couple of minutes, and uh, Enough said. Thank you. Mr. Young? Good evening. Robert Young, 20 Copper Mill Road. Um, I received my tax bill from the town of Wethersfield. And it appears that my taxes went up $590 on my real estate. Not on my cars, nothing like that. My real estate. That is 7% increase from the year before. To have a tax increase like that. And I know I attended the meeting here on, what was it, May 20th, when you decided on the budget. And I heard from Mr. Forrest. He was saying that taxes were going to go up $7. Remember that conversation, Mr. Forrest? As an average. Somehow I got 600, I'm sorry, $590 increase. I got a 7% increase, which tells me your budget had to be screwed up 
or what you were saying was totally screwed up. Because I don't understand how someone could have a $590 increase in their taxes, and my base is only 8000 to have that, which is, represents 7%. And I know Mr. Um, Mr. Spinella spoke that we can't continue going on like that. And when you go back and look at the entire year, and the year before, and the year before that, when this council didn't give a hoot about what, ta what taxpayers were saying up here, except for they listened to those few that said increase my taxes. The rest of us were saying reduce our taxes. At least I was. And I get a $590 bill extra. And it's not just this year. It's next year. It's going to be there too. And the year, because we know taxes are going to increase next year by 4%. The way you folks have burdened us with debt left and right, that $590 is going to be a and there's going to be an additional 4% put on it. I don't know what you folks are doing. You're not thinking. All you think about is spend, spend, spend. <clears throat> and you have no consideration for anybody. And, you know, $600 doesn't bother me much because I still work. But what about the person out there that's on Social Security? This may be on less than Social Security and still has a house. And I've been really thinking about this issue. You keep jacking the prices, the, the tax up. And every year we see over on the board tax lien sales. And I'm coming to the conclusion that the increases in taxes are part of your part and parcel to get rid of certain people or people who can't afford their homes, and you're going to get them out of here and get other kind of people in here. You're not going to do that to me, because you know I'll be down here constantly. But the fact remains, $590 increase, and Mr. Forrest argued, gave an argument about there's only going to be $7. So where's my $7 increase, Mr. Forrest? I got $590 increase. And again, it's just this year, 7%. You brag, oh, our taxes went up. I don't know what it went. I don't know what the town's taxes went up. Was it 3%, 4 3 and a half? I don't remember what it was. But I'm going to come up here and talk from here on forward that property taxes went up 7% in, in, in Weathersfield. You're going to hear from me at every GD meeting that comes along that I come to. 7% is what you people charge me. And I'm sure you did the same to many other people because you have to buy, you have to buy oh, lacrosse equipment, support coaches stipends. You have to um, give money away. Give money away. Do you remember how I spoke? You talked about the GDB, DBG money that was... Uh, uh, for the Weathersfield Housing Authority, sixty some sixty-three thousand dollars. You let it go back to the Housing Authority so they could spend it. And I stood up here and says it should go back into our treasury. We're the ones that are administering and cost us money to have that Weathersfield Housing Authority in our town. Okay, we're losing up, a Mr. great Young. deal of money, and here we are. Everybody, like myself, our taxes are going sky high, and they're going to continue. So this will be the battle right now. So I'm going to draw the line, because you're going to start hearing about this constantly. And when, I know you have an election coming up, and I hope I can bounce you out. Thank you. Anybody else who'd like to speak this evening? Okay, seeing no one, we'll move into council reports. Do we have council members who have reports this evening? Councilor Lesser. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, I attended the chamber meeting last Thursday, Ju July 11th, and just two things to report. One, tomorrow night they have a Tritown uh, chamber event at Turnpike Motors in Newington with Newington, Weathersfield, and Rock Hill. 
And secondly, they are having effective in August or at the, for the next meeting a change in uh, leadership. So Elena DeMarco, who has been president of the chamber, term is up. She actually ran a little bit longer. And um, there will be now co-presidents. There will be two presidents, Christina Orsini and Peter O'Keefe will be the new presidents, co-presidents of the Chamber of Commerce. Uh, that's it, Mayor. Thank you. Any other council reports? Deputy Mayor. Thank you, Mayor. <clears throat> uh, I attended the last EDIC meeting and uh, happy to say that uh, a lot of projects are coming to fruition or have, uh, are under renovations. Uh, if anybody's driven by the board and lately, uh, all five floors are up, so uh, I believe they're working on the roof now. I put some pictures out on Facebook on it. So that's moving along. Uh, the owner of that also bought the Webster building, and uh, that's expected to be done uh, by the end of this summer, the Webster building, and uh, people start moving into the apartments there, which will be good for us. Uh, on Main Street, what used to be the Cove Deli uh, is uh, up, is, um, beginning to show some progress. Uh, the walls are up and they're starting to put windows in that building and uh, they've expanded it. There was a deli in Hartford that's gonna be moving into there. So um, uh, he, he's doing a good job on the facility. Uh, the apartments on Ridge Road uh, are, have been done for a while and uh, we've been told that the apartments have all been rented. So that's another good thing for us. Uh, what used to be the School for the Blind at 170 Ridge Road, the um, Developer settled things with the state and has the building now and he's uh, starting to do demo in the building to get things started on that um, Puritan furniture has been sold and somebody else is in there. They're taking out underground tanks right now uh, To prepare to do what they're gonna do with that building uh, the uh, uh, Burger place that was supposed to go in at 24 Maple Went to HDC this past week. Uh, they tabled it for some more information, so it'll be coming forward. And um, that's it basically from EDIC. Thank you. Any other council reports? Okay, seeing none, moving into council comments. Any council members have comments to make? Is that a quick question? Sure. Tony, I don't know if you have information, but if folks are interested in the board, and is there a management company identified yet? Uh, the Livingston group is the one doing the development on it. I would imagine uh, that's where they would contact. Peter, am I right on that? Uh, probably Marty Kenny directly, if you could link. Okay, Marty Kenny is the uh, developer and the owner of the uh, Lexington group. They're in Hartford, so they could contact them. Okay, um, and do we know what's going on at the Puritan building? I think the developer hasn't made it public yet. Okay. Do we know are they is local? Is that right? Or? Is that right, Peter? That's, that's correct. He has not shared his plans for it yet. Is he local or where is he from? He's local. It's actually the. You want to come up to the. Would, when, I, when I come up later, if you'd like to do a little bit follow up at that point? Sure. Any sure. Okay, I just don't want you talking from the audience. The TV can't pick you up. Thank you. We want you on TV, Peter. <laughs> <laughs> with, with Sam. Um, Councilor Latina, will you follow up with Peter when he's up up at the podium? Okay. Any other council comments? Council comments? Okay. I just have a few um, announcements. The farmer's market continues every Thursday from 3 to 6.30 uh, through October 10th. If you haven't had the opportunity, it's um, a great town event. The Keeney Coolers Concert Series uh, they have a concert tomorrow night and again on the 23rd at 5.30. Um, Weathersfield Teen Theater production of Fame, the musical, is being performed July uh, Thursday, Friday, and Saturday, the 25th through the 27th. Uh, and that production's at Weathersfield High School. You can get ticket information online. Um, Monday, August 5th is Weathersfield Dollars for Scholars 22nd Annual Golf Outing. Tuesday, August 6th at 6 is Police National Night Out. This is, um, in, this is the Weathersfield Police Department in partnership with the Park and Rec, the Volunteer Fire Department, and the Ambulance Association. And it's um, a night of activities, music, and food for Weathersfield residents. This year it is at 
Greenfield. Greenfield, moved from Millwoods. Uh, the food bank is low on food, so if you're able to help, donations would be appreciated. Um, and finally, town staff is working to arrange meetings with small groups in town in an effort to continue our ongoing community conversations. Uh, we hope to have one of those small group conversations in August and then another one in September. And that's all of the um, info that I have for this evening. Uh, the town manager, do you have a report, or I should say our interim town manager for the week? And we should have announced that earlier. Gary Evans is um, away on vacation this week, and we're happy to have Kathy filling in for him this evening. So thank you, Kathy. You're welcome, and no report. Okay, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Come on. Um, town clerk's communications, do you have anything? Okay, wow, moving right along. Um, council action. There are um, no, let's see, except, well, we have acceptance of resignation from boards and commissions. Uh, motion to accept the resignation from the Historic District Commission. Daniel Buckham, Bucknam from 108 Garden Street. His term was 9115 to 63019. Second. Okay, uh, any comments or questions on that? Seeing none, all in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? Motion carries. Thank you. Next, we move into the democratic appointments to boards and commissions. Do we have a motion? Motion to approve for the Capital Improvement Advisory Commission. Uh, Michael Grabowski from 46 Westway, 7119 to 63021. Robert Turjan from 962 Cloverdale Circle from 7119 to 63021, the South, uh, Central, Health, Central Connecticut Health District, Anne Marie, Marie De, uh, De Loretto, 143 Eastern Drive, 719, 7119 to 63022, Design Review Advisory Committee, Joseph E. Hickey Jr., 28 Meadowview Drive, 9119 to 123022, Board of Ethics, Lorinda Kuhn, 11 Robbins Drive, 7119 to 63022. Paula Izzard, 92 Ciderbrook Drive, 7119 to 63022. Alternate Lori Adyami, uh, 110 Woodside Drive, 719 to 63020. Fair Rent Tenant Member, Lindsay Jones, 216 Back Lane, 7119 to 63021. Flood and Erosion Control Board, uh, Lorinda Coons for 11 uh, Robbins Drive, 7119 to 63022. Alternate, Basea Del Ripa, 37 Robbinswood, 7119 to 63022. Historic District Commission, Chris Lines, 21 Woodland Street, 7119 to 63024. Human Re Rights and Relations Commission, David Zagaja, uh, 19 Wildwood Road, 719 to 63022. Inland Wetlands and Conservation Commission, Brett M. Owen, Vice Chair, 42 Wells Farm Drive, 7119 to 63022. Insurance Committee, Frank L. Cena, 103 Eastern Drive, 7119 to 63024. Library Board of Directors, uh, Martha Keneally, 12 Fairmont Street, 7119 to 63022. Peter Denegre, uh, 527 Main Street, 7119 to 63022. Lila Mondor, 420 Ridge Road, 7119 to 63022. Park and Rec Board, Thomas Mull, 159 Surrey Drive, 7119 to 63022. Uh, Personnel Appeals Board, Maria Alfonso, 256 Brimfield Road, 7119 to 63022. <coughs> Planning and Zoning Commission, Joseph L. Hammer, 65 Broad Street, 7119 to 63022. Dan A. Silver, 23 Orchard Brook Drive, 7119 to 63022. Senior Citizens Advisory Committee, Claire A. Meehan, uh, Health and Medical from 34 Tubrook Road, 7119 to 63021. Joseph M. Mann at large, 
3034 Two Brook Road, 7119 to 63021. Carol Cobbler Narses from 34 Griswold Road, 7119 to 63020. Shade Tree Commission, Joseph E. Hickey, 28 Meadowview Drive, 7119 to 63022. Tree Warden, Corey Christians, uh, our town employee at the town garage, who's the town arborist, 7119 to 63020. And uh, Zoning Board of Appeals from Altit, full member, Elizabeth Keys, 119 Dix Road, 91718 to 63021. Okay. Um, um, we have a motion and a second. Are there any questions or comments? Seeing none, all in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstentions? Motion carries. Thank you. We have the Republican appointments to boards and commissions. Okay. Board of Assessment Appeals, George Cody, 131 Charter Road, 7119 to 6302022, Municipal Agent for Children, Erica Texera. She's Assistant Director in the Social and Youth Services, 505 Southstein Highway, 71519 to 63021, Design Review Advisory Committee, Andrea Boyle, 703 Walkett Hill Road, Stephen C. Hines, 294 Hangdog Road, both 7119 to 123122. Weathersfield Advisory Committee for People with Disabilities, John Beretta, 40 Tollgate Road, Joanne Haynes, <coughs> Chair, 516 Highland Street, Elaine Zeeler, 39 Old Mill Road, all 7119 to 63021. Municipal Agent for Elderly, Christine Taylor, 505 Southstein Highway, 71519 to 63021. Board of Ethics, John Adamanian, 86 Waters View Drive, 7119 to 63022. Historic District Commission to Alternates, Damian Krieg, 493 Main Street. Vaclav Miglas, 31 Main Street, 7119 to 63022. Housing Authority, Michael Rona, 16 Fairmont Street, 8119 to 73124. Human Rights and Relations Commission, James Pelletier, 61 State Street, 7119 to 63022. Inland Wetlands and Conservation <coughs> Commission, David Harold, 227 Griswold Road, John Rashes, 418 Walkett Hill Road, alternate Lou Michaels, 303 Garden Street, all 7119 to 63022. Insurance Committee, Tom Fitzpatrick, 40 Whipperwill Way, 7119 to 63024. Park and Rec Board, Stathi Manusas, 136 Windmill Hill, 7119 to 63022. Planning and Zoning Commission, James Hughes, 135 Highland Street, Dave Edwards, 200 Windmill Hill, both 7119 to 63022. Shade Tree Commission, Bruce Graver, 55 Round Hill Road, 7119 to 63022. Senior Citizens Advisory Committee, Kathy, Back, Kathy Bagley from the Rec and Park Committee, 505 Celestine Highway, Henry Hornat, 33 Main Street, Unit 5, Amy Miller, Senior Center Coordinator, um, 505 Celestine Highway, all 7119 to 63021. Volunteer Firefighters Pension Committee, Tom Fitzpatrick, 40 Whipperwill Ray, um, alternate Tyler Flanagan, 19 Hunters Pass, both 7119 to 63021. Youth Advisory Board, Barbara Rue, 79 Main Street, 7119 to 63022. Tyler Flanagan, 19 Hunters Path, 7119 to 63020. Zoning Board of Appeals, John Gustafson, 182 Amherst Street, 7119 to 63022. Is there a second? second? Okay. We have a motion and a second. Are there any comments or questions? Yeah, just uh, one correction. Mike. Uh, uh, Henry Hornet is uh, 53 Mill Street, not Main Street. 33? 33, 33 Mill Street. 33 Mill Street. 
I haven't got my glasses on. So I, do, I did catch the street. Do it street. all over again. That's fine. Back to the beginning. Right. It's okay. Where he lives. Okay, we'll make sure that Dolores has the correct address. Anything else? Seeing nothing, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstentions? Motion carries. Thank you. Um, we have no ordinances or resolutions for approval this evening. We have no unfinished business for this evening. Um, and we have one item of other business, an award for AARP Annual Community Challenge Grant. Do we have a motion? Motion to approve resolution authorizing the town manager to accept, administer, and execute a memorandum of understanding for the 2019 AARP Community College grant application in an amount not to exceed $10,000. Second. Okay, we have a motion and a second. Uh, Kathy, will you be speaking on this or should we have Peter come up? We can certainly okay. have Peter come up. <laughs> Thank you for being here, Peter. Good evening, Mayor, Deputy Mayor, and Councilors. Um, you should have in your packet a pretty comprehensive uh, listing of the improvements that we're seeking uh, authorization for tonight. Uh, this is a project that came out of the uh, Bike and Pedestrian Advisory Committee. Uh, this grant opportunity presented itself, and the group felt uh, we should uh, apply uh, for the uh, funds. The funds will be used for a series of bicycle racks, uh, uh, park benches, uh, mapping and information relating, relating to bike and walking trails in town, and also some uh, minor signage improvements to uh, improve uh, the bike routes in the community. Um, this is an annual uh, funding opportunity through uh, AARP. I think this is the second year of funding. Um, we think we have a very good chance at the funding. Uh, they are actually making the announcement uh, later this week, uh, so we'll know v relatively soon if the funding uh, would be available to us. Um, we have inventoried um, various locations in the community to identify where bike racks e exist and where they don't exist. So the list that um, you have in front of you are all of those locations where uh, bike racks do not exist. Some of them are important uh, community uh, centers, such as the Keeney Center and the Senior Center. Uh, there are several parks that don't have uh, bicycle rack so uh, we went through a, a, a pretty uh, extensive process to document that and uh, try and the the effort here is to fill in the gaps where they exist in the community thank you the um, the grant is for ten thousand dollars the grant is for ten thousand there is a um, an in-kind uh, match uh, so we're using uh, physical services uh, uh, labor uh, where they will install the benches as well as the bicycle racks okay thank you any other questions or comments Councilor Rell. Thank you, Peter. Uh, have we applied for and had we ever received any of this grant from AARP in the past? We have not applied before. Okay. Thank you. Sure. Anything else? Okay. Councilor Lesser. Thank you, Mayor. Peter, for some reason we don't get this. Are we still planning to go ahead with some of these improvements and bike racks and things? Or uh, We would like to. We would come back at some point, whether through it's the capital improvement program or other grant opportunities to try and pursue those. We think um, there's clearly a need, particularly at some of the major community facilities. So uh, if, if we do not get the funds, we will have uh, further conversations about that as we go forward. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Certainly. Anything else? We'll vote on this, then we'll laugh. Yeah. Um, seeing none, all in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? Motion carries. Councilor Latina, did you want to follow up with Peter? Very different from the AARP grant. <laughs> what is the status, I guess, of, so Puritan sold, is that so what you're Puritan saying? Puritan sold for, I think, uh, 3.9 million. Uh, don't quote me at that, it might have been a little bit less than that, but uh, it was sold to the group that uh, owns and has developed uh, the building uh, in front of it where Starling Physicians and also where LASIK and Liberty Bank um, is located. He also owns other properties in town, so they have a, a pretty significant track record. Uh, they are um, planning to demolish the building and redevelop it. Um, that is the detail that we have at this point. They haven't shared with us who the tenants are, what they might propose to do there, but uh, they are actively engaged now in um, uh, I, 
for lack of a better term, environmental remediation, oil removal of oil tanks and hazardous materials from the property. I don't think it's a significant, but they are in the middle of that right now. If you've been by there, the property is now fenced off for safety reasons, so uh, you should see activity, uh, demolition activity very shortly. And what is that area zoned for? It's zoned um, general commercial. So a whole host of different uses could be permitted there if they uh, so ch chose. The property does have some uh, flood zone uh, and some wetland uh, limitations, so uh, it will have to go through those boards and commissions uh, in order to be redeveloped. But When do you anticipate hearing from them about possible plans? I imagine they'll probably be in over the next few months uh, to share. We have a pre-application review process with some of the boards and commissions and folks usually like to take advantage of that to get some feedback before they finalize plans. So I would imagine uh, maybe in the fall. Thank you. Certainly. Councilor Lesser. Yeah, Peter, Tony mentioned um, the burger place and I don't know if you have any more detail on where that stands and the likelihood. So it's the um, Artisanal Burger Company. I believe they have a location in Manchester. Um, the gentleman who owns the property down there is, a, I think, a part owner in that um, franchise. Uh, so they uh, did appear in front of the Historic District Commission last Tuesday night and uh, have plans to um, build a new location right there. Uh, the Historic District Commission had some details that they wanted to be followed up on. So, Thank you. And once they're finished with HDC, they go back to planning and zoning? They will go to planning and zoning after that. So I would imagine potentially in August or September, they'll, they'll be appearing in front of planning and zoning. Okay, thank you. Sure. Anything else for Peter while he's up here? A little impromptu uh, info session. You, you might as well <laughs> since I'm here. I haven't been in front of you for quite a while. Oh so. boy, here we go. <laughs> back to Councilor Latina. <laughs> I was just curious. Um, there seems to be more movement on the turnpike where the old restaurant used to be next to the Dunkin' Donuts. Do we know at all what that's going to be? It is going to be another restaurant. I can at least tell you that. The name uh, and any more details is still uh, out there. Um, it's uh, a new owner there. He has not um, done a restaurant before. So, um, but it will be a restaurant hopefully sooner than later. It um, uh, seems like they make two steps forward and three steps back um, in terms of the, the work that they're doing there. But it seems to be a weekend, weekend type of job. Is there anything on our part that we can do, or is it all kind of his own personal development? Yeah, it's, we've reached out and encouraged a, a speedier, uh, you know, set of improvements there. But as long as they are working on it at some level, the building department does not have a lot of say in attempting to move that along. So, okay, thank you. Sure, Councillor Rell. Uh, just jumping back to um, what Councillor Martino had talked about, twenty-four Maple Street. Uh, over the last couple of months, maybe over about a year now, there's been concern from some Middletown Avenue residents with uh, the two properties that were raised to the south of Maple Street. Um, has there been any dialogue with some of the concerned residents in that area, either from, and I know having you know served as the liaison for HDC, I know ha there has been some conversations back and forth. I don't know if they've gone to the level of um, P and Z yet at all. So they, there have there have been there has been dialogue with the neighbors. Uh, the neighbors um, uh, did, uh, or at least one, uh, the spokesperson for the neighbors uh, came into the building department. Uh, the plans for the building were shared and, and provided to them, so they understood exactly what was going on there. The neighbors did appear at the Historic District Commission meeting, and they will appear at the next Historic District Commission meeting. And I know they've also reached out to the town manager, uh, and he he's um, and had previously met with a f former interim town manager um, uh, last uh, last year or earlier this year. So so it's an ongoing mm -hmm. uh, dialogue right now. Um, um, there are still some temporary fences and there's some overgrown, so we've been trying to get the property owner to take care of that sooner than later, and it's been a little more of a challenge than okay. we would like to say. Um, just because, you know, hearing from some of the local residents in that area and seeing that the some of the fences and what they had left and the overgrown, um, is there any... Uh, can we ask that property owner to, you know, maybe expedite some of the 
you know, clean up and some of the uh, work that needs to be done just to make it a little bit more appealing. I know the re residents don't like the fact that the buildings had gone down, but you know, they are down and now we've got some vacant property there. Um, is there a way we can work with the property owner to make that area look a little bit better prior to them coming back for any kind of permits through the planning and zoning? Uh, we have uh, reached out to them and um, tried to push that along and uh, have obviously not been successful. I will pass that along to the building official because it was related to the demolition of the building. So, um, and then also the property maintenance officer if need be. So mm -hmm. I will, uh, I will, you know, reinforce uh, the concerns that you've shared with me tonight and see if we can get that uh, taken care of before too much more time goes by. I think the developer was kind of waiting till he got approvals and he would do everything at the same time, but there's really no need for that kind of delay. Okay. He can still cut the grass. Yes. It's uh, does, doesn't take a lot. Yeah. Thank you, Peter. Sure. Okay, thank you. Okay. Anybody else? Peter, thank you for being with us this have evening. Have a good evening. Thanks. Okay, moving on to bids. We have no bids. Ordinances, resolutions, and appointments. We have none for introduction. We move into minutes, the June 17th, 2019 regular minutes. Do we have a motion? I'll make a motion to approve the meeting minutes of June 17th, 2019 regular meeting. Do we have a second? Second. Are there any changes, corrections to those minutes? Okay, seeing none, all in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Any abstentions? Abstain. Abstain. One, we two. Work. Okay, we've got Councillor Latina, Breton, and Forrest abstaining. Thank you. Motion passes. Um, we now move back into public comment. Members of the public may speak for five minutes. Is there anybody who would like to speak? Mr. Mazzarella? Good evening, Tom Mazzarella, 600 Walker Hill Road. I wasn't going to speak, but I just thought I'd share with you my uh, attendance at the Historic District Commission meeting the other night about the proposed uh, 24 Maple Street project. It was uh, normally HDC meets in the uh, town manager's conference room, and it wouldn't accommodate the crowd, so we sat here in council chambers, and uh, it was a pretty heated discussion by the uh, uh, mostly the Middletown Avenue residents. Uh, everybody's come to the realization that there's nothing they can do about what's happened in the past. Um, I got to say, the developers really played this thing out. They just went step by step. Nothing you can do about it. At the planning and zoning meeting a few months ago, they requested a zone change for the parcels where the two houses existed. And they had a lot of nice drawings up there. They claimed they needed access to the southern part of the building they couldn't hit the loading docks with tractor trailers and they needed that to be commercial property so that they could expand their access to that and uh, at hdc they presented a plan architects drawing a layout and that whole area where the got to have the loading docks is now parking lot with islands with trees and shrubs to accommodate the restaurant. From day one, the only reason they needed to acquire those two pieces of property was because the northeast corner of that lot is in the floodplain. And they didn't have enough water retention area to build anything there. So they needed the property where the two houses were to accommodate that floodplain situation. They just keep telling you whatever they need to tell you to get to the next step. And that's where they are now. Now we're faced with the place looks like uh, it's deplorable. You know, a guy can't even pick up some down tree limbs and things like that. And he's not going to do anything until he gets his project approved. 
I think the restaurant's going to be great. It's, it's very attractive. Um, it's not what the Middletown residents want, but um, they're in a situation now where they got to do something because it looks lousy the way it is, so they might as well go with the restaurant. One of the things that I'd like to see pushed forward is <clears throat> there is no sidewalk on that side of uh, Route 3. And uh, we're all about this access and, and walkability, and we have a lot of residents up on the southwest section of Silestine Highway, apartments and so forth, and pedestrians ought to be able to walk to that restaurant. Well, that's a big hurdle for them. There's a lot of problems with putting sidewalks in over there. You have to cross railroad tracks. The railroad uh, cross mechanisms are in the way of the sidewalks. Uh, there's uh, terrain issues with the other properties, the uh, uh, Pops exhaust facility there, and Valeros. So it's going to be a struggle. It also. Uh, Eversource has an easement there. So it's going to be a real struggle to get sidewalks put in there. And I would like to see planning and zoning put their foot down and say, okay, you get your restaurant, but you got to get the sidewalks put in. And we don't really care how hard it is or how long it takes or how much money costs. Get the sidewalks in so it's accessible to the residents and we'll approve the plan. And... Uh, I hope it goes that way. Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> Excuse me. Anybody else like to speak this evening? Mr. Young? Good evening again. Robert Young, 20 Copper Mill Road. For someone who is getting whacked all this extra money on my taxes, I, and I've been here so much asking you to reduce costs. I think you better start doing something. You know, we have discussions throughout the year about different things to buy. You, one night we talked about Chromebooks, and we ended up with a lease. And then during the budget process, the, the superintendent said that the, the leases were not economical. He wanted to buy them out or pay cash by putting the dollars into the budget and getting it right away, filter, filter it out. But why would it be uneconomical when you have millions of dollars of equipment that you've been buying on credit? Millions. Not only equipment, but you got turf, you got a, a number of other things, police cars and whatnot. You live so far beyond your means. And, of course, in the end, someone else has got to pay for it. And I and a lot of others are going to be paying dearly for it, for what mistakes you made. Not, you didn't make mistakes. Let's forget that. You did it purposely to take care of whoever you wanted to take care of, but you didn't take care of the citizens, the regular high-paying citizens. You hammered them. Every one of you did. You know, we... You've been putting away money for road repair, $1.5 million. And I sat back, and how many years has that been going on? Three, four years, five years, three years. Now it's up to 1.8. Consider that inflation that, that you're picking up on that issue, on the repairs from 1.5 over the course of three, four years, and all of a sudden it goes up to 1.8. That's a tremendous inflation. As a matter of fact, it's all poor management. It's absolutely poor management how you give out these bids and, and, and negotiate with them, with, with whoever's going to do the job. Because who cares? Someone's going to pay for it out there in Netherland, you know? And I'm going to pay for it because of your finaglings. You know, it wasn't long ago you were talking about putting a in the flood zone a salt shed and you had to get it in as quickly as possible before some rules or laws came into effect. Has no business in the flood zone. But you people pay, are paying, what, 600, whatever, hundreds of thousands of dollars for a, for a shed that's going to be in a flood zone. That's 
absolute poor management. I could say some other words. Then, of course, we have the Keisha farm. The Keisha farm that uh, Mr. Forrest had said was probably fair market value. And, of course, he read the, he read the appraisal. None of the people from the public, as far as I know, have read the appraisal. But he read the appraisal, and he said it was fair market value, but I've been searching around for properties, similar, any kind of properties that have acreage to it, and, and the prices are running fifteen dollars to $30,000 an acre. On the average, we've had property sell right in Rocky Hill for in the 20s, 30, 27 acres and the 30, 000, less than $30,000 with a real nice house on it. You're not even getting a nice house on, at the Keisha farm. You're getting some old dump. And you're paying $75,000 an acre, which also includes about five acres of wetlands that you're paying $75,000 an acre for that wetlands too. And my taxes go up $590 in one year. And I shouldn't be up here yelling, screaming, telling you what a bunch you are to pull a deal like this and all these other deals, you don't negotiate anything. I'm waiting for that appraisal. And did Mr. Forrest once support putting that appraisal out to the public? I never heard a word from him. Matter of fact, I, the only one that spoke was probably Mr. Hurley, and he said that I and the public should have had that appraisal before the, uh, before the referendum. And here we are. We're still sitting waiting for FOI, a meeting that happened back in January 2nd of this year, and they haven't made a decision. And your low-life lawyer was in there saying that I should be dismissed. They didn't dismiss me, did they? They didn't dis dismiss me, but they also didn't come out with a decision because I believe that they're protecting you folks so you can get your deal through and pay that $75,000 an acre for wetlands. Okay, your and, time and, is that up. Makes, and that makes our tax bills go sky high, madam. But I know you have no, no concern for that, none whatsoever. But thank you very much. I'll be back next week. And one other thing is that I, I, I think about this thing that happened back in uh, last year with the uh, Forest Commission. Uh, boy, if, if it wasn't for Mr. Spinella who spoke up to protect the citizens, this, this citizen and all these other citizens would really be in a tough situation thanks to the suggestions made by Mr. <laughs> Forrest, Mr. Lesser, and Ms. Latina who were on that commission. Thank you very much. Thank you. Is there anybody else who'd like to speak this evening? Mr. Wu? I have no idea. Good evening again. George A. Rue, 956 Cloverdale Circle. I got a couple of questions just came up this evening. It come, popped into my head. I forgot them earlier. Cloverdale Pond. Tony and I discussed that at the D-Day event, okay? about getting it cleaned up a little bit, you recall, Tony? Anyway, my, one of my, my immediate neighbor, whose name was mentioned here as being on a capital investment committee and another neighbor of mine on the tree committee right around the corner, uh, they, they're on these commissions that have an interest in that pond. Well, I shared also with Sally Katz, and I want to share with the council, we spent a lot of money fixing that pond up, and everybody com compliment, uh, compl uh, compliments the town about it. But the growth is getting out of hand again on the downside of the dam, on the input end of the dam, and it needs, the, the grass gets cut regularly, but the, the edging needs to be done. There's a lot of uh, algae and all kind of growth, and it's going to interfere, and it won't be long until the thing is all closed up, okay? Uh, another thing, uh, uh, Amy mentioned this uh, small group meeting, and that, I think I read about that in a paper. Uh, immediately after the death of this uh, gentleman in town here. And uh, I, I, have been, I was interested in, I wish I had known about it at the time. And you, I, I recall there was something planned for September, but I gather you were mentioning something is going to, you're going to have another meeting in August. Will that be announced? Could you kind of send me an email or something? Or 
or you've got the sure I just paused you for a minute yeah. um, we we town staff is in the process of arranging meetings with some town staff in small groups within our community all the meetings will not be open to the general public but within small groups small communities and I don't mean it's not open to the community but we're trying to um, pinpoint different groups that we would like to invite to the table for conversations and the town is trying to start some of those conversations one of those groups that we're trying to have a conversation with is the housing authority members of the housing authority people who live there well are we talking about the same thing I, i'm talking about this incident where this where this gentleman got killed sure and, and as, was part, there, there as was part some is part of a not like a is okay. part of a nine month to year long plan. Yeah. And, 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 the and, town is is trying to host different events throughout the next you know nine yeah. months to a year with different groups in the community. Some are larger conversations, some are smaller conversations, um, to get to get input and get the sense of how people feel in our community. And like I said, they're, it, the, in, what is being worked on now is some small group plans. Um, and when Gary comes back, he can give you some more information. Yeah, I mean, I was, I, my recollection, it had to do with the uh, newspaper reporting and it specifically mentioned September. And I started to file it away and wrote it on my calendar to follow right. up. He just would to, like to just have to a like to sit in and, uh, and see what's happening. Mm -hmm. I mean, I'm still as old as I am. I'm still very interested in what's happening in this town. Of course. And I don't hesitate to put my two we'll cents in when, when, it's, when it's asked for or when it's not asked for. <laughs> so that was that one. And another question that came up. And, and Bob Young mentioned it's going to be an election in 2020. You see, my brain said that's one one coming up, but he reaffirmed that that's that's true. And and I had one other question as you were going through all of the names of the people appointed to commissions. I noticed there were two people, as I recall, too, who gave their home address as 570 Silas Dean Highway. One of them was Kathy, and the other one was someone else. And why is that? If everybody in town has got their name and address on a committee or a commission. How come Kathy and this other person do not? Just a simple question. Sure. And I don't need to get the answer, but you well, I'll just tell you quickly. I'm, we're totally breaking protocol. Um, town employees list the, their place of employment as their address. So the tree, um, the, our arborist, Corey Christian, the town um, park and rec director, uh, Erica, who's our social and youth services assistant director, they're all on those boards and commissions in their capacity as a town employee. They may not necessarily live in this community, and they're not serving as a community member, but in their capacity as a town employee. Technical support? Is that mm -hmm. a reasonable well, no, term? they're actually No, they're actually board, the members of the, the members boards of, and Do commissions. they vote? Yes. You can yes. vote also? Yes. I'm just curious. I'm just curious. Just, that's really all I had to, all I had to uh, comment on was the pond and that particular point which caught my attention, the election, and, uh, and uh, thank you very kindly. I think I didn't use up all my five minutes or whatever, yeah. so thanks again. Okay, anybody else who'd like to speak this evening? Okay. Councilor Lesser, do we have a motion? I move we adjourn. Anybody second Se that? Second. Okay, all in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? Motion carries. Thank you.